Good morning, dear. Welcome back. And you have started watching videos on introduction to machine learning. And in that context, we are continuing our discussion on support vector machine. Uh, today, we are going to um, uh, tell you about the concept of Lagrangian duality. Why we need to understand this concept? Of course, later on, we have dedicated lectures. Um, stay tuned and you will be able to um, listen all those lectures which talks uh, exclusively on support vector machine dual problem. We try to formulate Lagrangian duality, uh, we need to understand Lagrangian duality and we try to formulate uh, dual problem because it helps us in many times, right? Because in, in case of support vector machine, we need to exploit its uh, capability to the fullest extent. What is the meaning of that? As you know, support vector machine is a linear machine, right? That means it can classify uh, the linearly separable problem only. It can deal with the linearly separable problem only like this, okay? As we have... Uh, done so far, right? Now, how about this kind of problem? Uh, if I have this kind of problem, that means in 2D, say for example, they are not linearly separable. So, two class negative samples are just like round sepid and positive sample are cross sepid. If you have this kind of um, samples which are not linearly separable, then can you not use a support vector machine with so much of elegance? The answer is yes. We actually uh, will talk more about kernel. Kernel is a function which is basically a transfer function which takes your sample from say two dimensional feature space to a higher dimensional feature space where it can be linearly separable. And of course, there is a theory, Marshall theory, <laughs> which tells you that it is always possible to make a uh, non linearly separable problem to a corresponding linearly separable problem, taking it to a sufficiently higher dimensional space. We will discuss all these exciting things. So, if I try to use the same support vector machine uh, using kernel function to solve such non-linearly uh, separable problems, then solving dual problems turns out to be more convenient than solving the primal problem. Okay. Also, it allows us to derive an efficient algorithm for solving the dual problem. Typically, which will be performance-wise much better than if you uh, solve primal problem using generic quadratic problem solver. Q, that is uh, called uh, known as QP solver. So basically, these are the reasons for which we need to solve the dual problem of support vector machine. Now, you see, you have done many, many times, even in SVM, right? Uh, you see, what was our uh, original problem? The, uh, you see, Original problem was, objective was what? To maximize the width of the gutter so that halfway between them will be my decision boundary. Okay. So the problem was actually, if you remember, maximize this. Okay. So that was my objective function. 
So why we did not stick to it? Because we wanted to exploit the uh, rich theory of quadratic constant quadratic uh, optimization problem. So what we did, we just for our convenience, mathematical convenience, we changed our objective function. Instead of maximizing this, what we did, we tried to minimize this. And to explain to make it quadratic function, convex quadratic convex quadratic function, we just squared it. These are all mathematical convenience. So maximization problem was converted to minimization problem, which is a, an example of duality. But one thing you must remember, in doing so, always we will have to take care that the nature of the problem should not change. So our still minimizing this function still should solve, solve the purpose of maximizing the weight of the gutter. That you will have to take care always. And we always, this is a simple um, expression we could visually see that this and this, they are dual to each other. Another example I will give, which you have already studied in, um, in statistical interpretation of logic, uh, of a real, a linear regression problem, right? So where, if you remember, we generated a function, likelihood function with parameter like that. Don't worry, this is, uh, if you don't remember, nothing to be worried. Just I am giving an example, what is the meaning of duality and you have already, without uh, perhaps uh, referring this term, you have already used it and you are con quite conversant with it. So that was our actually um, maximum likelihood estimate likelihood estimate of uh, parameter W. So we wanted to maximize uh, this function because we wanted the expectation uh, the W should be such uh, so that this function will attain the maximum value. Okay. And in doing so, it turns out that this is same as same as minimizing this function. So minimizing okay. That's it. Isn't it? See? Because of this minus sign, this function max uh, your if your objective is to maximize this function. If you minimize this function, this part, that will serve your same purpose. So this is another example of duality. Okay. So you have some function which you require uh, to maximize. Instead, you are selecting some other function which you need to do opposite things and means minimize. So maximize, minimize, minimize, maximize. All this duality we uh, have already used. There are so many examples. For example, in um, industry, right? So, if you suppose you have a, a loss function, okay, loss function, which is a function of so many parameters, okay, man, material, machine, so many parameters, right? I am not, uh, and it has a complicated expression, for example. So, minimizing loss function, minimizing loss will be exactly equal to the maximizing profit. So, somehow, if, for example, in your analysis, you see that uh, generating a loss function is not so easy 
so uh, for which you want to minimize on the other hand you can easily formulate a profit function with it so the minimizing loss will be actually the objective will change maximizing profit or if you have a uh, vice versa that means a profit function a loss function is easy to construct okay then profit so you try to minimize loss that will serve your purpose maximizing profit so this are uh, dwell again so this kind of duality you have already studied you have already seen but when you see the uh, objective function is associated with constraint as in the case of support vector machine then you will have to take additional care okay and uh, that we actually need to know here you see uh, they are incidentally called kkt condition these are three guys name don't worry about that we will dedicate our lectures on how to formulate dual problem with support vector machine because they are so important uh, for us for uh, as i told you cracking out the maximum uh, benefit or uh, exploit maximum capacity capability of support vector machine because in our case the examples which i gave earlier they were actually one function you could visualize a dual function uh, maximize minimize minimize maximize right so here our objective function is to minimize this quadratic convex quadratic function subject to constraint when i have a constraint then of course you see this is my um, Lagrangian function corresponding to what? When I have put these values w, w we have got the parameter w we have got by minimize by uh, my objective is to minimize, right? So I have just differentiated this and I have cranked out this relation. So this relation corresponds to minimum value, right? Similar is a case when I put the values of b so these are all corresponding to minimization right so you see now look here my lagrangian function which will attain minimum value if i substitute w and this which i have done okay and i have got this expression and after simplification i have got this expression so this corresponds to minimum lagrangian value okay functional value and this is the primal problem now if i look little go deeper you see i have here a minus sign so minimizing this is equivalent to maximize this function isn't it okay because somehow we'll have to uh, figure out some algorithm which will uh, work on your sample and train the machine training means they will determine uh, the um, uh, alphas and then accordingly we'll get parameter and then only we'll get the decision boundary okay so it turns out that if we consider a dual problem okay Lagrangian dual, so Lagrangian primal problem this, so Lagrangian dual problem if you formulate, then our objective will change to from minimize, uh, minimization uh, function to a maximization function because of this minus sign. This is as simple as this, not so simple. <laughs> but for the time being, for understanding this is simple. Why not so simple? Because now I have a constraint, I will have to always check that in formulating a dual problem the nature of the objective should not change any time okay that's the uh, very important thing and in mathematical term if we try to formulate a dual problem lagrangian dual problem which will turn to a maximum of minimum uh, function then 
I will have to make sure that KKT's conditions are satisfied because I have a constraint in formulating the um, minimization to a maximization problem. The nature of the problem should not change. The constraint uh, should uh, should be should not be violated. So all these things are to be obeyed very perfectly. Then only you can uh, make sure that you have formulated a correct dual problem. And when you have done it, since you have a benefit, as you can see, it's much more simpler to handle with a dual problem. Okay, the duality uh, is only there and it is researched uh, because it is advantageous. In case of uh, sort vector machine also, it is advantageous. So that's the concept which will elaborate, will formulate KKT condition. Okay, mm, uh, what is KKT condition? Uh, will formulate a dual problem. Okay, more elaborately. Uh, and they will, they will be discussed in subsequent uh, lecture videos. So don't go away, uh, stay tuned, okay. Uh, one more thing, um, maybe we have some one or two minutes time, so uh, we can discuss, if somebody asks you, why it is called a machine support vector? Machine, where is a machine? What is a machine? After all, you know, uh, machine means uh, normally we we see that okay if we put some uh, weight here eh, and this, there is a fulcrum and then uh, if you put weight and then uh, some load is being lifted here okay say a man was sitting over here okay and uh, some load is here so it will go up okay and if the load is bigger, it will again go down, up and down. So this kind of, so you put effort and get your work done at some other place uh, is an example of machine, right? Now, is something like that is happening here? Not really. Okay, support vector machine in that context, okay, uh, is not a machine. Uh, but you can think of support vector machine and many people, uh, although it may not be true always, uh, think that support vector machine is an of the self tool where you just give sample and then you get a uh, result that uh, uh, decision boundary is drawn after training, decision boundary is drawn and if you give a sample then classification is done, okay, as if it's of the cell machine. It's very, uh, once it is trained, it's very easy uh, to handle. So since this of the cell nature is there, it acts like a machine, okay, automatic machine, which will automatically classify. That may be the reason why uh, it is called a machine, okay. So with this, uh, if you have any other query and if you have any other doubt, so please come to the discussion forum so that we can discuss um, um, issues, more details, okay. Till then, stay safe from the virus and uh, study um, and also watch the video, other video lectures. Till then, have a nice day. Bye-bye.